Yeah, hello everyone. Myself Maruti, welcoming you all to Ram Maruti Tutorials. All right. In this video, I'm going to explain a topic dealing with real numbers. In that real numbers, uh, I'm choosing a problem here. Right. Root uh, seven minus two root three whole divided by five. We are supposed to prove it is as irrational number. Okay. In this method, uh, to prove it as irrational number. I am taking the contradictory method. Alright, we know any derivation or any sum can be proved in three methods direct method, indirect method, and contradictory method. So, let me tell you what is the meaning of a contradictory method. A contradictory method means we will be taking the opposite of what is required to prove. You got it. We will be taking the opposite of what we are required to prove. Right, suppose you assume that here we are supposed to prove it as irrational number. Now we take, we assume as if the given question is not irrational, we assume it as rational. Okay, so when we assume it as rational, obviously uh, if you solve the sum, we will reach a place uh, where we come to a contradiction. All right, what is the meaning of contradiction? Contradiction means going against the known facts. Right, so whatever we assumed, obviously, as it is a wrong assumption, we go against the rules. When we reach against the rules, then we tell that as we have reached a contradiction, our assumption is wrong and the opposite of our assumption is right. You will get to know, you will get to know. Here, what he said, prove that 7 minus 2 root 3 by 5 is irrational. So, to prove that one, to prove that, right, to prove that. What is supposed to prove? 7 minus 2 root 3 whole divided by 5 is irrational. Irrational. Okay. What we are assuming? We are taking the contradicting method. Let's write in a contradictory method. In a contradictory method. Let's assume that. Let's assume that. Let's assume that. What we are going to assume here? The opposite of that. So what it is actually it has to be proved irrational. Let's assume the opposite of that. So 7 minus 2 root 3 whole divided by 5 is rational we are assuming. Check it out. Here we are supposed to prove irrational. We are assuming it is as rational. Okay. Now the main point what we got is nothing but rational. Right. Now let's think about the rules of a rational number. What is a rational number? A number which can be written in the form of numerator and denominator. A number which can be written in the form of P by Q is a rational number. So let's follow all the rules. Whether all those rules are applicable to this one. Right. If they are applicable, it is good. If it is not applicable, then we say we reach to a contradiction. Let's think about the rules of a rational number. So what he says, right, according to the rules, we know that. What do you know? Right. A rational number. A rational number. Rational is equal to can be written in the form of P by Q. If it is a rational, we should be able to write in the form of P by Q. Therefore, as we are taking this as a rational number, let us take it as 7 minus 2 root 3 whole divided by 5 is equal to P by Q. Now, it's not simple. Just let's go for the rules of that P by Q now. Here, here, yes, P comma Q are integers. This is the first rule so that if these are integers, then only this is rational. We are support. And please remember, P comma Q are co-primes. They should be co-prime. They should be integers and they should be co-primes. Now here, what is the meaning of a co-prime? Co-prime means we have to remember that. So HCF, highest common factor, highest common factor of these P comma Q should be only one. This is and the last point is the denominator Q should not be zero. These are the three rules. It has to be followed if this is a rational number. Let's keep on checking that. Let's keep on checking that. Let's go for that. Now, so what we are having? So 7 minus 2 root 3 whole divided by 5 is equal to P by Q. What we got? 
so we will simplify we will isolate the only root present there you have to remember seven five two all these things are no take the only root there keep only the root there send transpose transform all the remaining all stuff to the other side so what i am doing seven minus two root three i kept it there the denominator five i am transposing it becomes 5p by q yep the known fact now the positive 7 you send it to the other side but here is the tricky part the one what we need the root what it is it's a negative we don't want under negative so what i'm doing i'm transposing minus 2 root 3 to the other side and bringing that one here 7 minus 5p by q is equal to 2 root 3 fine now i'm taking the lcm of this stuff the lcm is q right if it is nothing but 7q minus 5p is nothing but 2 root 3 okay just i'm changing this 2 root 3 is equal to 7q minus 5p by q no issues now what i said to you leave only the under root here the send the remaining one to the other side so 2 what it is doing here multiplying send it to the other side so root to 3 is equal to 7q minus 5p by 2q so what did i do right from the entire stuff i have isolated only the under root the remaining all send it to the other side now let us check it out all the rules of this one and check it out now so let's go for this so here what we are getting here we have already proved p comma q are integers right p comma q are integers okay man p comma q are integers we got it now if you check the other numbers right 2 5 and the 7 obviously p comma q the p and the q's all are integers fine and the remaining 7 5 2 all these are right it's nothing but prime numbers okay right of course then what we can say the combination of the integers and the other integers the entire stuff please remember here p comma q are integers we took it the other numbers 2 5 7 they are also integers okay the addition division and the entire stuff will also become integer which implies 7q minus 5p whole divided by 2q is also integer because you have to remember this one the combination of all integers the addition multiplication and division the entire becomes division okay it becomes integer now coming to the fact here you come back to here if these two are integers the other side what we call it as it's a rational right why because it according to the rules if this is integer the other side will come up what's that rational if this side is everything is integer the first side will become rational now see here this total side just now we call it as integers if this is integer what will be the first side become the first side will become it as rational that's what which implies according to the rules according to rules of rational according to the rules of rational as it is in the form of numerator and denominator the other one which is towards the front will become rational root 2 3 is rational okay yes root 2 3 is rational come on man how can be a number which is a prime and which is under root how can it be irrational it is not at all possible the one inside is 3 we know it is nothing but a prime number right square root of a prime number can never be What's that? Rational. It is nothing but irrational. But we got, according to the rules, according to the assumption what we made, if you simplify, we reach to a point which is against the rules. What is the rule? A number, a prime number under the root can never be rational. But we reach to a point where we, we are saying that it is rational. So, we reach to a contradiction. We reach. We reach to a contradictory point right what is that contradictory point right under root of a prime can never be rational so we reach to a contradictory point what is the contradictory point root 3 is rational so what we are able to as we have reached a contradictory point we have to accept that assumption our assumption is wrong 
which implies our assumption is wrong. Right. So, as we go to a contradiction, an impossible thing, our assumption is wrong. What is the assumption what we made? We assume that 7 minus 2 root 3 by 5 is a rational. So, as our assumption is wrong, rational, the opposite of that one, 7 minus 2 root 3 by 5 is irrational, which implies 7 minus 2 root 3 by 5 is irrational. Right? Hence proved. Yes, this is how what we are proving that 7 minus so and so is irrational. Now let me come back. To prove that, we are going to the contradictory part. Contradictory part means we are taking wrong assumption. We have assumed it as rational. The one what we are supposed to prove, we are taking the opposite. As it is a rational, we know a rational number can be written in the form of p by q. Where these two are integers, they both are co-primes and the HCF of both of them is 1. Okay, now what I have done, I have simplified, we brought only the root to one side, sent the remaining all to the other side, this is the normal calculation, we got it. Now, the here the point lies, here P comma Q are integers, we guessed it, and the combination of all the primes and the integers, again we are getting it as integer. So, if this side is integer, the other side will become as rational. So, as this side entire stuff, we call it as integer, right? The other, the first stuff becomes rational. So, we got the root to 3, minor root to 3, we got it as rational. Rational, it can be under root of a prime number can never be a rational. So, we came to a contradictory point. Contradictory point means what? Opposite to the known facts. As we have reached to a known opposite of the known facts, we are accepting that our assumption is wrong. So, our assumption is wrong. So, what is right? The opposite of our assumption is right. That is 7 minus 2 root 3 by 5 is irrational. Guys, hope you are able to understand the concept of what I said. Make it easy with Brahman. In this channel, I have been placing both math and science videos.